Do you want to work faster, smarter, more efficiently? Today's video is a little something different. Today I've gathered a few of some of my favorite creators and producers of video related content to share their top single per person production efficiency tips for how they maintain an efficient workflow or get things done very, very quickly within the video production space. I know I have a lot of up and coming content creators or so on following my work and I thought this would be a great idea for both me to learn something new and to share some cool stuff with you all along with a few fresh faces. Let's jump in. Is, uh, this is what gets me through the day is peanut M&Ms. Uh -oh. I think you've seen enough. So I'm Eeples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. In this video, we have Lon Seidman from Lon TV. We've got Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooter. We've got Taryn from Linus Media Group. And we have Svin from This Guy Edits, who is also a professional movie editor and things like that. So a, a pretty far spectrum of who we're covering, as well as what kind of tips are provided. We've got philosophical, what you should think about kind of tips. We've got direct, actionable things you can do. We've got specific tools that are used, and we've also just got some mindset stuff. So let's jump on in. You may proceed. Hey guys, my name's Caleb Pike. I run a channel called DSLR Video Shooter, and this is my number one tip for efficiency when it comes to video production. There's so much that goes into making a video, but one of the biggest things for me when it comes to making sure things stay efficient is how I use the different building blocks of assembling a video. One example of a building block would be A-roll, which you're watching right now, me directly addressing the camera. The benefits of A-roll like this is your viewers and people watching the video get to see you, and it's not just a voice or images, they get to develop a relationship with you, the personality behind the video. Using voiceovers or recording directly into the microphone like this without seeing things gives you the benefit of higher quality audio, because I'm right up on this microphone. It's gonna sound much better than a A-roll type shot. And finally, B-roll, while it doesn't usually include audio, is going to allow you to cover up several edits. Take this little bit of audio, for example. I've done several edits and it's all been hidden by this clip. And it's really important, in my opinion, to know and understand the best uses for those different building blocks and how you're going to use them for each of your videos. If you know those ahead of time, as you're thinking about and working through the script of your video, you can plan that out. And if any problems come up, you can use those to solve some issues. For instance, if there's construction at the studio next door, I might not be able to film in here and record my voice, so maybe I'll just use B-roll and voiceovers instead. Another example would be if I'm doing a very technical video and I can't remember or memorize or I don't have a teleprompter, uh, maybe I'll just do the intro and conclusion of the video with the A-roll and the rest is going to be either a screencast or voiceover. Knowing what blocks you have available to you in your arsenal and thinking about how you're going to use those before you start rolling your camera or your microphone is a great way to stay ahead of the game and make sure you're able to bang out videos as quickly as possible, all while remaining very efficient and thinking about this stuff is what I do day to day to make sure I can get these videos out at the highest quality and most timely manner. Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman with Lon.TV and efficiency has been a very important part of my channel growth over the last couple of years because as my channel has been growing, my obligations have also grown. My family's gotten bigger. I had a full-time job that I was juggling up until a couple of months ago. So it was very difficult to get the time that I needed to really focus on producing YouTube videos. But one of the solutions I had is everything that you see around me right now because for the most part, when I record a video, I record it live to disc. I've got a camera here, a camera there. I can plug in my computer over here and get uh, the output as you can see in my graphics right over there and I'm doing that all as I'm recording the video so that when I go to edit everything is a lot less complicated I can basically just take what I did string it together and upload the video it goes a lot quicker now you don't need to have a fancy video switcher to do this I've eventually uh, worked my way up to a TriCaster which is what I'm using now but uh, you can even start just shooting multi-camera and I'm actually doing that right now where my iPhone is recording separately from this main track of video and many editing packages like Premiere and Final Cut Pro allow you to take multiple video sources and put them together, sync them up with just the audio of what you recorded, 
and you got yourself something that you can uh, just switch between in editing software, and that's a lot faster than shooting video, getting B-roll, doing all the assembly that goes into making a video. You can basically just do a very quick cut between uh, your different camera angles and then have your video ready to go because you did it all once versus having to repeat things two or three times. And in many cases, your cell phone is probably good enough to act as a secondary camera. Now, if you're ready to go to a switcher, Blackmagic has one for about $1,000 or so. You can put in about four sources via HDMI, including computers and other things like I've got a uh, up to my TriCaster right now, and uh, there's some great options out there, but really consider uh, shooting everything at the same time so you have less to edit later, and that really uh, sped up my process considerably, and I upgraded equipment over time as I needed to get uh, more things done in real time, so that's why I went to the TriCaster. I can have this graphic here popped up, and I can very easily take it off or put it back on. I can have multiple things on screen at the same time, but I didn't go there until I needed to, and I think that's a really critical thing to consider is that uh, don't buy a equipment you don't know you need yet. Until you really know you need it, uh, that's when you should consider working with it. So my advice would be start multi-camera and work your way up from there. You can find me at lon.tv. Always happy to take questions and I do do an occasional production series on the channel as well. Thanks for watching. Efficiency. Yeah, I uh, get up at 6 a.m. in the morning and I'm out there jogging. No, I don't do that. I have a daily list, I have a weekly list, and I have a monthly list. So every time a thought pops in my head, oh, I should be doing this, I put it down, and then I check it off. I go back to that list on a daily basis. I don't do any of that. Warren Buffett doesn't have a list. I don't know where I picked this up, but uh, I remember a teacher presenting to his class a vase, and he had a bunch of like sand and little pebbles, and he had tennis balls, and he had like bigger uh, golf balls and he had water. He said try and put all that into the vase and they will start putting in the sand and the water and then um, some of the pebbles and the tennis balls and they couldn't make it work. It couldn't all fit in. But after a while the, uh, the teacher said now look at the tennis balls as what's most important to get done. These are the things that actually matter. The projects that will make a big difference. So he suggests to put all the tennis balls into the vase. And then the lesser important things are maybe the golf balls. And he puts those in. Then he would put the least important things like uh, the pebbles and the sand and eventually the water. And by doing it in this order, by starting off with the most important things, he was able to fit a lot more things into the vase. Because if you start off with the small things, the big ones might not fit in anymore because uh, something got in the way. So when you start your day, make sure you know what the two, three things are that are important. So you can pretty much tell how useful something is to me based upon its proximity to my left hand. Right hand is for mouse, left hand is for literally all of this crap. So the most useful scripts and macros that I have are the instant application switcher scripts. So I can just straight up press the word button and I go to word and I can press uh, explore and I go to explore. But the key is if I keep pressing it, it goes to the windows in the order that they were first opened. So if I have more than one word script open, which I think I, oh I do, it'll always go to the latest one. Oh, oh, it's magic. So I press it twice. Ooh, it goes to the second one this time. Wow. And also, uh, Firefox, I'll hit it and I'll keep hitting it and it'll go to the next tab and so on and so forth. And here's No Man's Sky, apparently. And uh, then I have the back button, which goes back. I don't know. It's great. Here's the Vox asking me to shoot this video over here. And, ooh, this is amazing. I also have, uh, let's say that I want the palette gear to be an app to switch to. I can go shift and then this one, which is not yet relabeled properly. And now that one works as well. It's a dynamic on the fly reassignable key. And I can do that for all of them. I could have it be like alt and then the key and then it would just have a new thing. So uh, the script for this is on my GitHub somewhere. It's on the uh, Windows mods script. I have, I have 
many more macros, but the most useful ones are the application switching. And like, this is really simple, really simple code. And I use it all the time. I have a tutorial about it. I don't know what else to say. You may proceed. My biggest efficiency tip overall is probably just to separate your working environment from your playing environment. And this especially applies to the younger people that are following me and the more kind of beginner content creators that follow me. And it's a big problem for myself, especially since I work from home at the, point, at the moment, that causes a lot of problems. And that is your production rig, your editing workstation, your editing computer, or your script writing area, or your photo editing thing it should be separate from where you sleep you know, obviously if you're young, still living with your parents, you can't separate that. But moving out of my parents' house into an apartment and separating where my computers were from my bed was the biggest boon to not just my efficiency per se, but my overall mental health and the way I approached it. Because if you're constantly working and stuff, you always feel less efficient or less effective than you really are because you always feel that grind of, I need to be out there working instead of sleeping or doing whatever. And when you can separate other associations of what the space is used for from work, it's so much easier to just jump in, sit down, and get to work, and focus on work. This is especially good if you have a laptop that you can take with you. If you can't separate your physical workspace, for example, my office is still my office for everything. I have to game and edit and produce all on the same computer. I, you know, waste time in the same place that I do work. It's still difficult for me, but if you have a laptop that you can offload some of your work to or do certain things on, Go to random coffee shops, go to random local parks, go out of your house, go out of your comfort zone, out of your usual workspace to just all in focus on whatever topic you're working on. So if you're script writing, you can probably do photo editing on the go. You can do, if you have a good enough laptop and some headphones, you can do video editing in a coffee shop or whatever. You know, find new spaces where you can get out of your usual bubble when you really need to just zone in all in and work on it. So. Thank you so much to Sven, Lon, Taryn, and Caleb. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Thank you to everyone who were in the video for contributing your tips and participating in CoLab. Come go check out their channels, all linked in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like it if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to me if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy working. Epos Vox is a Patreon supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other benefits, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.